Hey, Grant, have you heard what Tanya said? No. Why would I care? Check out the video. Which one? The one with all the anti-Semitic comments. Do you realize how little that narrows this down? Wait, no. You don't mean... Oh god. No. No, not again. Why? Why does this topic keep getting more relevant? At least you're making money for it. <laughs> I wish. The United Music Group's got that video copyright cleaned out the wazoo, so no, I'm not making any money off of it. But what if I made a second video? I got it! Hey there, if you found this video, then you're probably curious about all of the anti-Semitic crap Kanye West has been spouting recently. Well, I made a video about this a few years ago that goes into much deeper detail than this video does. But if you're looking for just the basics to get you started, this is the video for you. Okay then, let's start with the basics. What do we call them? Well, they have gone by a number of different names over the years. The most commonly used ones today are Hebrew Israelites or Black Israelites, but I prefer to go with Black Hebrew Israelites. This is a term these groups used to use themselves, and it's the most commonly used term among scholars, and it's what you'll find on Wikipedia. Okay, then what do they believe? The exact details of what they believe vary from group to group, but the common root belief is that the slaves brought to America in the Atlantic slave trade were descendants of the Biblical Israelites, which makes African Americans today descendants of the Biblical Israelites. This is why you'll see many of them say, Blacks are the real Jews. This belief can be called Black Israelism. Israelism is a belief that a certain group is descended from the Biblical Israelites, there are other famous Israelisms, such as the Anglo-Israelites, who are mostly white supremacists, as well as Mormonism, which believes that the American Indians are descendants of the Israelites. Their explanations for how this happened vary, ranging from Jewish refugees fleeing Judea after the destruction of the Second Temple, who then settle in West Africa, to some that believe that the events of the Bible actually take place in West Africa, but white Christians systematically erased their true history. The evidence for, well, any of these theories is rather lacking. There have been no DNA studies linking peoples of West Africa to Jewish populations anywhere else in the world. The closest you get are some older studies connecting West African tribes to Arab haplogroups, which is easily explained via the Arab conquest of the 7th and 8th centuries, as well as the Arab caravans trading across the Sahara. When it comes to their Israelite ancestry, the BHIs can be placed into one of two broad categories, inclusive and exclusive. The inclusive groups believe that both dark and light-skinned Jews are legitimately Jews. The exclusive groups, however, reject the legitimacy of lighter-skinned Jews, labeling them as false Jews. They will often make references to the Synagogue of Satan to explain their existence. I could go into more detail, but I already have a video doing that. So let's go into what their ideological beliefs are. The movement began in the late 19th century, with numerous self-professed prophets claiming that God had told them about their origins. Most of these early groups were Christians who incorporated black Israelism into their teachings. They were heavily influenced by the Seventh-day Adventist movement and very easily fell into the wings of charismatic Christianity. Later groups, however, would begin rejecting Christianity, abandoning the New Testament entirely. This creates another two broad categories for the black Hebrew Israelites. Christian BHIs, and Jewish BHIs. This is determined by which scriptures and texts each adopt. Among the Christian BHIs, we have two camps, those that retain the entire New Testament and those that reject the books written by St. Paul, whose epistles do the most work in differentiating Christianity from Judaism. Among the Jewish BHIs, there are those who reject the Talmud, referred to as Tanakh-only BHIs, and those who recognize the Talmud, called Talmudic BHIs. And then there are the seven books of the Apocrypha or Deuterocanon. Most, but not all, Christian BHIs like to incorporate the Apocrypha into their scripture. I think this is partly because most black Hebrew Israelites grew up in black Protestant households in which the Bibles don't contain the Apocrypha, thereby adding to this mystique of there is a truth being hidden from you. There are also Jewish BHIs that incorporate the Apocrypha as well, despite most traditional Jewish denominations not including them. When you look into the BHI movement, you'll see they borrow ideas and concepts from other movements, Israelism being the most obvious, as well as teachings about divine gifts such as prophecy or the speaking or understanding of tongues, which is borrowed from charismatic Christianity. They also like to lean on the work done by non-religious movements, 
such as the Hoteps. The Hoteps are a whole other can of worms that I don't feel like dealing with here. The short version is that they believe that the ancient Egyptians were actually black. They base this assertion on the existence of the Nubian dynasty, which came out of modern day Sudan and their leaders are depicted with dark skin. But it was a single dynasty that's not even included in the numbered dynasties of Egyptian historiography. The Hoteps take this limited data set and assert that the ancient Egyptians were all black. If you ever heard someone say, we were kings, this is where that idea comes from. And the black Hebrew Israelites like to lean on the Hotep's assertions about ancient Egypt to back up their own historical claims. They will bring up the story of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus going into hiding in Egypt to escape King Herod. They will say, why would God tell them to hide in Egypt if they were going to stand out like a sore thumb? This argument doesn't make sense until you realize that they are presuming the ancient Egyptians were black as well. The first is that white people are descendants of Noah's son, Japheth, whose descendants are traditionally believed to have gone and settled what is now Europe. Now, the Bible is silent on skin color. It's not really something it cares about, but the black Hebrew Israelites will claim that there are clues hidden in the text or that the references once existed, but white Christians rewrote the Bible to cover it up. Well, one belief is that all humans prior to the great flood of Noah were black skinned, but after the flood, Japheth asked God to make his skin white. From this point forward, all lighter skinned people's existence is attributed to miscegenation between the descendants of Japheth and those of Ham and Shem. Now, where is this belief first written down? I have no clue. The assertion is made in the book from Babylon to Timbuktu, but no sources are cited or referenced. The other explanation happens later in the biblical timeline, believing that white people are descendants from Esau, the brother of Jacob, one of the patriarchs of the Israelites. Their argument for this is that Jacob's skin is described as being smooth and hairless, while Esau is described as being ruddy and hairy, since phenotypically those of sub-Saharan African descent tend to have less body hair, the BHIs conjecture that Jacob must have been black and Esau must have been white. Another category to explain is the origin of white people, which depending on who you ask, you'll get a different explanation, but there are two popular theories. There is a more nefarious motivation behind this belief because among some biblical scholars, Esau is believed to have been the forefather of the Edomites who are portrayed in the Bible as one of the arch nemeses of the Israelites. The book of Obadiah describes the Edomites as proud, violent, and indifferent to the fate of Israel. King Herod, who tried to kill Jesus, is believed by some to be descended from the Edomites, and God promises them a divine reckoning. Because of the violence against your brother Jacob, you will be covered with shame. You will be destroyed forever. And this, of course, plays into the history of racist discrimination in the United States, which explains the, uh, some of the more boisterous street preachers you might hear. Now, this was just a quick and dirty introduction into the Black Hebrew Israelites, but if this video has whetted your appetite, then I suggest you watch my 2019 video for a deeper dive. And if you're new to this channel and you've enjoyed this and maybe some of my other videos, then I would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to turn on notifications, as well as clicking the like button and leaving a comment down below and sharing it. That tells the algorithm that this video has high engagement and is worth sharing. And if you've been here for a while and you're already on board with what I'm doing here at Casual Historian, then I would like to ask you to take a survey down in the description below. The 2022 Casual Historian Audience Survey. I use that to help collect information about what my audience would actually want to see in the coming year. So if you want to influence the kind of videos I make in 2023, fill out that survey. And I'd also like to thank my patrons for being a steady support for the channel over the last few months as we've been dealing with some very rough algorithm weather. Patrons get special perks such as early access to videos which are uncensored and free of ads and sponsors. They also get access to things such as scripts and notes I use for videos as well as access to a patrons only discord server where I can talk with them about my current and upcoming projects. So if you are interested in becoming a patron and supporting Casual Historian then go to patreon.com slash casual historian to learn more. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.